In the last video, I assembled the frame, the gantry, and the carriage. And now everything is on the frame but the bed, so that's what we are going to do now. The end, the end is close. It's close. Yes, I'm going to use V wheels for the set axis, and there are two main reasons for that. The first one is that getting linear rails of that length is going to cost a fortune, and the second one is that I want to read about your strong opinions about V wheels in the comments. Yeah. You may have noticed that I'm missing the pulleys on the motors, and that's just because I wanted to try some pulleys bigger than the ones on that printer in there, because I wanted to see if I can move the bed up and down a little bit faster. But I couldn't find pulleys of the exact teeth number that I wanted. So I used my DIY milling machine to make new ones. Of course, this wasn't of course, this wasn't first try, it took a few attempts, and also I tried a few different ways of machining them. But in the end, I got four good ones, so let's get them in the motors. And just like that, the bed frame is complete, and now I need a heated surface this huge, and for that I've thought of something quite special. Usually to heat up something this big, I would use one of those silicone heating pads, but that means that I can only build heated beds that are a multiple of the size of one of those silicone pads. For example, if I'm using half a meter by half a meter heated pads, I can only build beds that are half a meter or one meter or one meter and a half long. So I've started searching for a heating element that could allow me to heat up irregular beds. And I came up across this. These are wires to heat floors, the ones that you put under the floor in your house to heat it up. These won't go to incredibly high temps, but to heat up the bed for PLA and the kind of plastics that I use in my projects, this will be perfect. So let's get to it.
This cannot be cut. This is 12 meters and 360 watts, but you can get them in many different lengths to get different powers, like invisibility. It seems that I set up the spacing wrong, but it's not a big deal. I just have to start all over again. It's nothing, it's nothing. This took a while. Now that I've passed the belt through the bearings and the pulleys, I've realized that none of them have flanges, which means that the belt can come out of the pulley at any moment, because the belts are so long. So just in case, I will print idlers that will sit on top of the bearings with flanges and everything. But to 3D print a new pulley, I need a 3D model, and to create one, I recommend a professional grade CAD system like Onshape. There are a lot of 3D modeling softwares out there, but few are easy to use affordable and capable of giving you as many business tools as Onshape. And the best part is that Onshape is on the cloud, meaning that you don't have to install it and you are not just attached to one computer. Which means that you can share files with everyone, clients, suppliers, co-workers, and your designs will be updated instantly everywhere. Whether you are an engineer that wants to evaluate a new tool for your company or need a new CAD system for at-home projects, you can sign up for the free version and start designing in minutes at onshape.pro slash Ivan Miranda. And by clicking the link in the description, you are not only getting a great CAD system like Trek Bicycles or Okado Technologies are already doing, you are also helping this channel. And now let's get back to the monster bed.
I've been planning on using those space sheets and already had bought them like long time ago, but I've been trying this nanopolymer from Vision, Vision Miner lately. And even though I think space sheets are good, I think this is even better. So if you have any issues with things stacking to the bed, I will give this a go. By the way, not sponsored, I bought this. I don't think they even know I exist. And I think that was the last step. So let's check if everything works as it is supposed to. We already know that the bed moves up and down. The bed takes about eight minutes to heat up and uses about 2.2 kilowatts of peak power. And that's just to get to 60 degrees, then uses way less power. The six heating elements of the bed are wired in four groups. The first group is three elements on one side of the machine. Those are always on. And the other three elements are wired through these switches in here. So you can have half of the bed heated up, four six, five six, or the entire bed. That way, if you want to print something that is long but is going to take only one side of the bed, you can use just half the power by switching these three off. Power saving. And this will be four three two. I, I have to reprint this. We can move the Y axis back and forth. and the x-axis. Next, let me explain you the homing sequence. The zero coordinates of the printer are on that corner in there, but the limit switches for the y-axis are on this end to reduce the amount of wiring. So the homing sequence goes like this. The first one to home is the x-axis, then the y-axis goes to the top position and then goes back to the zero position on that corner in there. Next, the bed does sensorless homing of each one of the four motors independently, and that's just to get the bed close to level. Next, the touch sensor sets the set height and then goes to each one of the corners to perfectly set the bed to level. So, what's left? Let's do a test print to see if everything on that carriage works.
like two drops of water. Am I right? <laughs> I would say that I don't recommend as a first print for any DIY printer a 1.75 meter tall statue of yourself because of course this didn't come without issues. I have a layer shift right here. The filament got caught at the end of the spool right here. And it seems that I didn't properly crimp one of the wires for one of the Z-axis motors, so one of them stopped causing a diagonal layer shift right here that took a while to fix, although I think that I can now fix any issues mid-print. <laughs> I fixed everything. And for all of you that were worrying about how wobbly the structure of the printer is and clamping it down and fixing it to the wall and everything, a 1.7 meter hollow statue is way wobblier than that. I, I cannot believe that this, this finished. But of course, I wasn't going to let this print go bad, and here it is. I think I will remove myself from the bed now. I told you, like two drops of water. Just give me a second to clean myself. Just one final detail. Perfect. I have more. I took, well, he, he took just about like four days? Yeah, four days. Yeah, about four days to print. And weigh 6.2 kilos. And there are a lot of gaps in the print because the extruder kept skipping steps because I was trying to go too fast. I wonder if it had something to do with this black dust that appeared under the gears. I even had to put some oil mid-print to avoid this metal dust getting everywhere in the electronics. On the chest and the neck there are no gaps because I already had slowed down the print because I was afraid of losing it. You are such a coward. Hey, what? What? How's this? In the end, we think that's quite a nice machine. There are a few things here and there that need fixing. For example, the touch sensor was a bit too low and was hitting on the part. That's what caused the layer shift on the ankles. We think it's a great addition to the shop. If you want to give it a go, there is a link in the description. Remember that the design is modular, so you don't have to build it in this exact size. And now that you can build the bed in any shape you want, you can go wild. And we think that's it for this video, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons and members. Thanks a lot for your patience. You are awesome. And now please go and make something. Go. Hey.